Fantastic. Okay. So we came up with this equation last time, if you recall. Okay. Uh, don't shift around on me. So, and that was from solving this standard uh, second order differential equation. And we came up with that we can use this exponential form or using the Euler relations, um, we could use sines and cosines. And it's important to note, as we're going to see, um, this isn't exactly an accurate, uh, realistic wave function because it's one dimensional and it's time independent, um, but it's a good start. It's a good start for us, especially getting used to these mathematical operations. Okay. So for example, I'm going to play with this exponential form. I mean, if we just simply ask the question, uh, where is the particle? Okay. Where is the particle? Well, we know now that we can take the square modulus to find it. Okay. And so I'll remind you that square modulus goes as um, psi star, so I'm going to put the sub x there so we remember 1d, psi star psi, um, which we remember is the square modulus. Okay, And I'm not going to worry about integrating this. Um, let's just take the square modulus of this initial uh, wave function that we've come up with and see what happens. Um, and for now, just to make life easier, I'm going to play a game where we say suppose b equals 0. Okay. So again, this isn't accurate, but it's going to give us a good means of getting used to this mathematics. Okay. So then if B equals zero, we can say psi X just equals A E I K X. Okay. Um, and if I go and take the square modulus of this thing, so I remember that what I'm going to be doing, I'll fill in this notation. It's going to be A E I K X and the conjugate of that, that star, okay, times the wave function, right? So I'm just filling that in, psi star psi, okay? And so all of that is going to equal the following. So um, we'll say a star, and then when I apply the conjugate to that, that's going to be e to the negative i k x, okay? And then that's going to be times a e i k x. Okay. Well, what do I get out of this? Well, e to the negative i k x times e to the i k x is one. And we know that that a has to be a real number. It's a it's a constant. Um, so this just turns out to be um, a star a, um, which I will just write as the square modulus of a, okay? Um, and as it turns out, because there's no x dependence, this isn't exactly a realistic wave function, okay? So with the square modulus of this just being equal to some constant, it implies the wave function can be found everywhere simultaneously with equal probability. So in other words, if I were to normalize this wave function, okay, we know that with the normalized wave function, it's n squared um, integral of psi star psi dx all equals one. Well, if my psi star psi is just equal to this a squared, and then I go to normalize it, then that whole thing is just equal to one, as this indicates right here. And that implies the wave or the, the particle can be found everywhere with 100% probability. And that's just not realistic. Okay. And so an interpretation of that, that e to the i k x, um, that would be made up of a real component that's a cosine function and an imaginary component um, that's a sine function through that Euler relation. And so if I add those two waves together, I get this uniform uh, constructive interference. Okay. Well, what if we supposed that A equals B? Okay. So we have this scenario. Let's look at this scenario. Okay. 
So then I could write psi of x equal to a, and then that would be, um, so if we know that a is equal to b, then I'm just going to substitute and collect like terms. I'm e to the i k x plus e to the negative i k x all times a, okay? Um, and so I'll also note that and I'm not going to go through this in great detail, but, but through Euler, um, this would actually all be equal to 2a times the cosine of kx, okay, these two exponential functions. And then now, if I were to carry out the square modulus on this 2a cosine kx, okay, when I do the... Um, that there's no imaginary numbers in this cosine function, all right? So the square modulus of this will be truly just a square. So that will go as, right, 2 squared, a squared, cosine squared. That's all squared, okay? So that will be 4 times the quantity a squared times cosine squared kx. Um, and this is looking like a much more reasonable wave function and probability distribution because there is an x dependence. And so that's what this graph is right here. So my cosine kx function um, looks like this one that has the negative values, okay? And once again, where it crosses the origin, we call those uh, nodes. And where it peaks, those are most probable places of finding the electron. And so the cosine squared graph looks very similar to the cosine graph, except for um, it's a little bit narrower. And obviously, because it's squared, it doesn't have negative values. Okay. So what we're kind of starting to get at are um, more of these kind of guidelines of what should be acceptable wave functions. Okay. All the same, we're still going to play with this, with this, um, you know, what I'll call trial wave function, A E I K X plus B E negative I K X as a means of feeling our way around this quantum mechanics. Okay.